Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to True Crime, the podcast that helps you find new, emerging, and undiscovered true crime podcasts. I'm Greg, the host and curator of True Crime. Today's episode is from Crime, Wine, and Chaos. Crime, Wine, and Chaos is a true crime and chaos comedy podcast. Huh, maybe it's going to be killer funny. Um, murderously hilarious? It's going to slay? That's all I got. If you like today's episode, make sure to check out the episode description for links to subscribe. All right, let's get this show started. Begin. Hey, listeners, I'm Amber. And I'm Naomi. And this is Crime, Wine, and Chaos. Sorry, I got your screen. Your screen froze. (laughs) That's while I was dancing. No, right before, and then when it came back on, you were like, (laughs) "Oh my god, stop it!" Snort laughs. I'm already loving everything about this. Okay, so sorry. No, love it. I'm gonna do a quick uh, in case people are like, "What?" So. Erica has decided to take the rest of the summer off to spend with her little. So for the next four weeks, I will have guest co-host. And I'm starting with my big sister, Naomi. Bi- you know, big sister. Oh, not, I mean, she's a tiny human. Um, I thought older was not correct. No, it's fine. You know what? It's fine. I am a strong, independent feminist woman. And I am not embarrassed by my age. As you should I, be. I will be an older Good woman. And I am proud of it. Okay. So my older sister, and I love all this, and of course, you've heard her mentioned a gajillion times because most of my best stories have come from her. Oh, stop When I'm drawing a blank and I'm like, oh, she's like, how about the Yuba County Five? I'm like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That one was a doozy. That one's crazy pants. So sad. It's so weird. I'm convinced it was that guy that they never found. He did something. He did something Mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of the five. Yes. Yeah, he was like never found. He right. like disappeared. They never found his body. There was no it was like only the other four and he was the one that was like questionable and like not actually like like he was just like older and troubled and mm-hmm. not like one of the, you know, he didn't have any like disabilities or you know what I mean that the yeah. other other guys had. Anyway. Yeah. The weirdest yeah. part was that they clearly died of starvation, not hypothermia. Yeah. Like they were just hanging were there, out in and that they trailer were there for a long time. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was all That's very. Yeah, so it's so weird. weird. So, <laughs> so weird. Weird. <laughs> Ugh, upsetting. So thanks for that. that You're was welcome. Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. So you don't drink wine, and that's fine. I don't. I have my water. Per. Do you want? <laughs> is it a specific kind that you want people to know about? Or? <laughs> it came from my Berkey. <laughs> Love the Berkey. Love um, the Berkey. I poured myself, I have the Rona right now. I poured myself oh, yeah. this much wine. I was literally going to ask you and then I forgot. Like, oh yeah, she has the Rona. How are you feeling? I, I feel like literal ass. Um, the last time I had wine was last Wednesday when we recorded and I'm not enjoying anything about this. Um, <laughs> so that- why are you doing it then? I don't understand. Hmm. <laughs> the show must go on, Naomi. Oh, I'm, okay. Okay. This week I am drinking, I am tolerating uh, Colossal Reserva for Caso Santo. I thought you were going to say it. I- <laughs> I'm. What was the word you used? I'm enduring. I'm, I'm tolerating. I'm tolerating. I thought you were when you said col- you said colossal, but when you first said it, I thought you said I'm tolerating a col- colostomy bag. <laughs> I'm tolerating. Uh, that would be more than a tolerant. <laughs> Shit's gone way wrong. If- Literally. I've got a coloscopy bag happening. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> a calliope bag? Yeah. Oh my god. No, no, I'm not doing that. Oh my god, that would be the cap on this week, though. Like, well, now just I've lost control of my bowels too. So, there chef's you go. kiss, just a chef's kiss to the rest of this week. <laughs> Which is <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to keep coughing, and it's okay. You do it. You do it. Um, yeah, the Rona finally struck me down. I had a good uh, run. Yep, I had a you good know. Run. It happened. It's happened to the best of us. <clears throat> I, I did my Rona stint in June. Your Rona stint. Mm-hmm. 
I feel mm-hmm. like ass, but you know what? That's okay. It's okay. Um, you got anything for the good of the order before we dive into these <laughs> horrific stories? Do you want to tell people about yourself or is that well, like I mean- awkward circle fun time? <laughs> I mean, what is, what, what more do they need to know than I'm your older sister mm-hmm. and, uh, I am pivotal, p- pivotal, p- I am the reason why you are the way you are. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's not wrong. <laughs> Shit. Who Jake- was your friend that was like, there are three of you? Yes. <laughs> That was my favorite comment yeah. ever. <laughs> oh, that was Kathleen. Oh, she's wonderful. <laughs> no, Jake is so excited for this episode to uh, finally make the airways because he cannot wait to listen to the two of us. Oh, he my said, God. We are hilarious. He's like, I can sit and listen to you and Amber go at it like Stop for hours. It. Yes. Sweet baby Jake. I yeah. love that so much. <laughs> oh, my God. That's because you get me. I mean, you know, we have shared trauma. We have shared trials and tribulations. That's what happens when you have siblings. That that was dark. I was thinking more of shared fun time, but okay. I mean, we have some of those too. (laughs) Wow. That went real fucking dark. Speaking of, speaking of, your your listeners should know that because COVID ruins everything, you're probably not going to be at our sissy weekend. Annual sissy weekend. Mm Mm-mm. I missed my son's college graduation party. Oh, I know. I can't. Um, and now my favorite, my favorite time of every summer, sometimes early fall. Is <laughs> I know. Mm-hmm. I'm bummed. I'm super I, bummed. The worst is the fatigue. I know. It's so exhausting. But it's uh-huh. also like once I got through the physical fatigue, I still had this just kind of general ennui or like a malaise it was just like it wasn't even physical anymore but i still couldn't do anything it was so weird yeah i know yeah it's really weird it is weird i hate it i did finish a book for the first time in over a year though yeah what'd you read uh jody picolt's novel that michael bought me back in january in leavenworth what is it I don't even remember what it's called now. What kind of book is it? She writes sort of like her most famous one, I think turned into a movie with Cameron Diaz where it was like the one sister was born with like leukemia. And so the parents intentionally had like another, an organ baby. Yes. So her books are a little bit dark. There's a lot of, (laughs) just a little. (laughs) Yeah. Uh huh. Just some light reading for your Rona stint and this was a book that she clearly wrote during the pandemic and it was very rona focused and i was like well this is this is depressing and okay let's just triple down on the (laughs) rona depression excellent i I finished that today so that was fun okay okay all right right. well Mm -hmm. um you're going first right i'm going to tell me a crime story and it's not there's nothing funny about it but there's well, just so you know, my chaos story is ridiculous. So I, I will, I will lighten us up. How do you, Good. how do you know? Oh, cause I told Cause you, you that told it was ridiculous, me. but you uh-huh. don't know what it is. You have mm-hmm. no idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Great. No, but I felt okay going a little bit bleak since I knew that you were going to lighten the mood. But this story, this is so weird. So the entire time I've been podcasting, I've been trying to find this story that I remember watching on some ID show, but of course there's a million to choose from and I didn't know which one it was. And the, details that I could remember kind of fit into any true crime. Story. So like so, no, no Google search would find no, it. No. And I accidentally found it. I feel like you've talked about this before. Yes. Cause you've been searching for it. I have. I found it. Oh, this is exciting. I'm this really excited. Exciting. Yeah. Wait, so how long ago did you watch this ID show originally? Like four years ago. Okay. I cannot wait. Let's get into it. Okay. 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 I'm going to tell you about our gal here who we love. Her name is Katie Sharp. Okay. Okay. All right. She's 24 years old. She's a college student in Illinois. She's working and saving money so she can move to Nashville. She doesn't really say why other than like, she just thinks Nashville is like the coolest fucking place ever. Like the glam and the big city and all the things like she's just drawn to it. So she wants to move to Nashville. Okay. She's been in Illinois her whole life. She grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, Chicago. Mm Mm-hmm. She has a little sister or younger sister, whichever you prefer. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) However you're feeling. And her family is super tight knit. So 
In September 2010, Katie is working a couple of different bartending jobs to pay for school and save for her move. And her main job is at a bar called Choppers, which she describes as being like Cheers. Oh, yeah. Where everybody knows your name. Everyone knows your name. She says everyone knows each other. Katie calls it her home away from home. Everyone there is like family. And she felt really, really safe there. So she loved Illinois, but she always wanted to experience a big city. And she just heard great things about Nashville. So she was like, I'm doing it. I'm going to. Okay, I, I got it. I'm sorry. She's lives in the suburb of Chicago. I know. I, I know. <laughs> sorry. I, well, we can still take it lightly. Chicago is one of the biggest cities in the country. It's like a major city. All of John Hughes films were filmed outside of I Chicago. Know, and- Chicago was like the site of every good 80s movie and mm-hmm. some of the 90s movies. Mm-hmm. And she, it doesn't say anything um, in any of my research that she's like a singer because that's normally like right. why a person would want to go to Nashville if they right. are vying after the music industry in some way. Uh, I maybe she's a country girl at heart, but she wants a cu- maybe she wants a country city. Maybe she does. I don't know. Maybe she does. So uh, there's no way to know why, but this is this is she's got she's hyper focused on this dream and she's doing her damn thing. So Choppers is where Katie first meets Jimmy McNamara. Okay. Okay. So she's then- at work. Huh? That sounds familiar. I uh, maybe, but there's also lots of McNamaras in the world, or McNamara depends on who you. Who you're asking how they pronounce it. <laughs> oh, well, right now you're asking me and I'm pronouncing it McNamara. You got it. Great. So that's how I read it. Okay, great. So she goes over to the jukebox. 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 Yes. Jukebox mm-hmm. to select songs. And he comes over and start talk, starts talking to her. She said it was really obvious that he was trying to flirt with her. And he came across as someone who was extremely lonely. Oh, So Uh Katie, our girl Katie here, she's 24 years old and she's beautiful. Jimmy appears to be maybe in his 40s. He's overweight with a mullet. Oh, wait, what year is this? This is 2010. Okay. Before the mullets made a comeback. Basically, there's no excuse for this. There's no reason for this mullet. No, there's no. (laughs) I mean, you have to have a reason, you know? Jimmy offers no reason for the mullet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, your reason is either like I was young and it was the style at the time, or I'm I'm I want I want mullets to make a comeback. Those are the only two reasons. Have you ever seen a televangelist and thought, why? Or how? Well, on Short of the Glory, we attempt to answer both of those questions. I'm Ellen. And I'm Maddie. And we're two cousins that have a deep interest in the big names, the big institutions, and the deep pockets of white evangelicalism in America. Listen to Season 1, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and most places where you can find podcasts. Subscribe today and you'll be the first to know when Season 2 drops in early 2023. Peace be with you. And also with you. Well, if someone is going to be a trendsetter, it's not fucking Jimmy McNamara. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay, got if it. he's got trying it. to make a comeback, it's yeah. not happening at <laughs> Choppers by Jimmy. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So. Wait, 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 wait. How, how old is she again? 24. 24. Okay. That's what and I thought. He's like 40. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Still so, closer in age than Dane Cook and his new wife. I can't. I can't. <laughs> also, it's like if somebody, listen, <laughs> if you are seeking to be a trophy wife and you are rich and you're knowing that that's why your partner, if everyone's on board, then fine. Right. Sure. Just, I mean, consenting let's call a adults. Spade, though. Right. Like, right. Yeah. You're not attracted to that. Come on. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. No. You just All right. like living the high life. Okay. That's so, right. Um, but Jimmy, he, Jimmy, Jimmy was not, uh, he wasn't looking for a sugar baby. No, no. <laughs> well, we'll get to Jimmy. He's he, great. He's got some fucking issues. So, okay. 
Katie, uh, she obviously isn't attracted to him at all, but she doesn't mind chatting with him because that's what you do every day when you're a server or a bartender is you're friendly and you chat and you pretend to like people that you don't. That's your job. That's your job. And she's very good at it. So he starts coming into Choppers regularly and chatting with Katie and he learns that she's saving to move to Nashville. So he starts leaving her very generous tips. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. After a few weeks, he offers for Katie to come clean his house for extra money. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. And she agrees. Uh, uh, Okay. Yep. And in October of 2010, she started this side job. She goes to Jimmy's a couple times per week as he requests, but there's nothing really to clean. I'm like a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My cleaner comes once every four weeks. Yeah, I come here once every four weeks. (laughs) (laughs) You're cleaner. I make an appearance. Look, I have a cleaner, all right? This is a decision I made. No, I support that decision. I, I, for whatever reason, I got a bug up my butt today and decided that the entire house needs to be disinfected because of Rona. Yeah. And then I swept the floor and was so fatigued that I went and laid down. (laughs) (laughs) So you got up, you spread the Rona around a little bit, and you went back to bed. Yeah, I was like, that's good. I moved some shit around, and then I went and laid down. Yep, that's you know where what? we're at. Some days, that's all you can do. It's fine. I know, I know. Oh, my God. And you don't have a Katie. Katie? I don't, yeah, Katie. I don't have you a don't, Katie. You don't have a Katie coming twice nope. a week? No. Nope. Okay. Nope, I don't. Okay. So she's going a couple times a week, but so his house is immaculate. Um, He has a lot of expensive things. There's no dust anywhere. Every label is turned in the same direction. It's like actually OCD, like disturbing sort of clean. Okay. Do we? Right? Okay. Okay. I have so many questions already. Keep going. Do you want to ask them or Well, I'm I... just trying to face like, why, who is this guy? Why does he have so much money that he has such a nice house? Like and he's paying her to clean and he's leaving all these tips. Like what does he do for a living? Well, she finds out later that he's a drug dealer. Okay, great. Uh huh. Okay, so, but also that he's he's got some issues, like he's got some OCD, right? So Clearly. she pretends to clean a little bit, and Jimmy starts offering to pay her to stick around and play cards with him. <sighs> yeah. Let me guess, like strip poker? Nope, just cards. Okay. Uh huh. Again, Katie just thought that he was really lonely and didn't have friends, so she would stay and visit with Jimmy and play cards and whatever. So did he did he pay her for that or was this like friendly time? He paid her for that. Okay. He's basically paying for somebody uh, to talk yep, to yep, and a friend. Yep. And she feels bad for him and she's got her own agenda. So Yeah, she's so saving fun. her money. Yeah. She's got her big dream. She'll take mm-hmm. it. Yep. <clears throat> so over the next two months a friendship develops and Jimmy confided in Katie about his childhood. He said that his mom passed away and his dad was physically abusive. And one day he starts talking to Katie about his anger and he tells her that when people don't do what he wants them to do, they end up tortured and killed. What? Mm -hmm. He just says that? Yeah. And Katie's like, okay. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So did she just nope right out of there and end that shit? So she tries. (sighs) Uh Uh-huh. So she obviously goes from feeling sorry for him to being afraid of him. Yep. And he also tells Katie that if she doesn't do what he tells her to do, the same thing will happen to her. Well, I mean, obviously. Yeah. So she's freaked the fuck out. She starts to pull away from him. She Mm -hmm. ignores his phone calls, stops going. She doesn't go to his house to clean anymore. Um, And Jimmy tells her, quote, you will answer my calls. (sighs) Yeah. And I mean, she's 24 also. So it's like, we have to keep that in mind, too, that like, she does make some questionable choices here. But also like, I think people have like a, the bad thing won't happen to me. Kind Mm -hmm. of when you're, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the bad thing hasn't ever happened to her before. No. And she's grown up in suburbia and she's never strayed from her neighborhood she grew up in. And, you know, she works at Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. She's got her safe bubble. So. Mm -hmm. So. um, Katie is so afraid of him that she thinks that the right thing to do is to stay on his good side. So she goes back to making trips to his house. Okay. Uh huh. 
these trips don't even involve cleaning at all anymore. Jimmy just sits her down while he talks at her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. he, yeah. Mm -hmm. Her move is now supposed to be one month away. So she thinks she just has to tolerate him for one more month. And then she's moving to Nashville and she won't ever have to see him again. Right. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. So on December 12th, 2010, Katie goes to Jimmy's house and he shows her a couple pictures on his phone. And these pictures are pictures of her mom's house. And another one is of her dad's house. And he tells Katie, yeah, that she is going to go home and pack her things and move in with him. And if she doesn't, he will torture and kill both of her parents and her little sister. Oh, my God. I know. I know. Fucking psycho. Oh, my God. Yeah. Katie, of course, believes him. So she goes home, packs her things and returns to Jimmy's. And once she gets there, he makes her call her mom on speakerphone and tell her that she just met the most amazing man and fell in love and she moved in with him. Oh, God, it's so gross. I know. And this part, like, I don't I don't know anything about her mom or about their relationship. But her mom was just like, okay. But it's like, I don't know. I wish... I wish I knew more about the relationship or I don't know if Katie has a history of just being kind of free spirited and doing things. I wish there was some way that she could have dropped some code word. I don't know, but. Oh my God. Everybody needs code words for thing. Yeah. 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 But it works. So now her mom's like, okay, have fun. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. So December 14th, 2010, Jimmy breaks Katie's cell phone. And then he violently beats her for several hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. Katie said it was like a switch that was flipped. Um, And he just, yeah, beat the shit out of her for several hours. And then just like the switch flipped back and he just stopped and seemed to be at peace. Like nothing ever happened. At peace? Yeah. You got the demons out? I I guess so. (laughs) Demons out. (laughs) Uh Yeah. What the fuck? fuck uh i hate mm-hmm. him i hate him i hate him oh wait till you see pictures of him he is fucking gross i, ha- I mean i hate him and his fucking mullet okay yeah, keep going. fat with the mullet but if oh it, I mean, god can you imagine no Mm-mm. so uh for the first week katie cleans and waits on jimmy <clears throat> hand and foot during the day then at <sighs> night she would get beat for all the things that she messed up on during the day like not cutting the crust off of his sandwich and what is he fucking 12? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's fu- he's just he's fucking gross. Ugh. After the first week the beatings get worse and Katie gets to a point where she no longer screams or cries when Jimmy beats her and this pisses him off. Cuz he gets off on Well yeah, I yeah. Mhm. So, this is a trigger warning. This is bad. Okay. So in response to this, he gets an aluminum bat oh. and beats beats her with it. And she's like this tiny little petite, itty bitty thing. And he's just like ugh, this giant fat bastard with a mole. I mean, it's just, it's awful. How long has she been there at this point? Uh, at this point, she's been there for like a month. Oh. Mm-hmm. Both of Katie's shins are split open from the bat, but Jimmy only gives her 30 seconds each day to clean and dress her wounds. And she is also not allowed to take a shower. Ever? Uh Uh-uh. She hasn't taken a shower this whole fucking time? No. No. Yeah. So then, on December 24th, 2010, Jimmy takes Katie out of the home for the very first time. They go to his brother Charlie's house for Christmas Eve. What? Uh huh. Yeah. I know. She's just like broken and battered and unshowered for over a month, and he takes her to his brother's house to celebrate Christmas. Uh huh. Yes. He thinks he is a master manipulator when he is not. I think he. I. I I don't fucking know. I don't. I. I. I actually can't speak to the pathology of Jimmy McNamara. He's. Well, we'll get to it because his brother is fucking disgusting too. <sighs> so they go also, to the also. Also, I feel like I have maybe heard this story before. Like it's ringing the dimmest fucking bell. Oh, but not enough. Keep going. 
This okay, I will. This I will. It's horrible. Keep going. It's fucking as they say. horrible, yeah. but keep going. Okay, yes. so um, it's very clear that Carol that she's been like <clears throat> severely beaten. So she's hoping that someone at this family celebration will notice and say something. Yeah. So at Charlie's house, it is Jimmy, Katie, Charlie, and Charlie's girlfriend, Amanda. What Katie doesn't know is that Charlie and Amanda have both been attacked by Jimmy before, and they are both afraid of him, especially Amanda. Well, yeah. Yeah. She says that Jimmy, uh, Amanda says that Jimmy has told her that if she ever called the cops on him, that he would kill her and her children. Charlie... I mean, we're not going to give Charlie a pass on being scared because he seems like just as much of a prick. He's completely unfazed by Katie's appearance. But Amanda looks really worried. Jimmy even starts to brag to Charlie about how he's been beating Katie and they're both like laughing and high-fiving each other. Can you fucking no, imagine? I cannot. Can I cannot. No. These no. are garbage fucking humans. Garbage humans. Real fucking garbage humans. Yes. Fucking pieces of shit. Uh-huh. At one point, um, Charlie and Jimmy go to another room and Katie and Amanda are left alone. And Amanda uh, like grabs Katie by the shoulders. And she's like, you need to leave before he kills you. And she tells Amanda that she can't because he will kill her family. Right. And then Jimmy and Charlie come back inside. So they start playing a game, I don't know, like dominoes or whatever. And Jimmy, <laughs> <It's> okay, <laughs> they crack up in their old English and start playing dominoes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which is probably what happened. Oh my god! I'm texting Michael really quick that I need some more wine. <laughs> the wine that you're just tolerating? Oh, that was actually pretty tasty. Okay. Uh, I mean, I can't actually taste anything, and also there's no joy. There, ever so. there's just period there's just no joy <laughs> well period you know, there's I, no qualifying that sentence amber's joy is gone <laughs> uh, the end okay so <laughs> joyless the end so um so okay so they're playing a game and jimmy pulls out his phone and he starts uh yelling at katie and making claims that there's <clears throat> outgoing calls to nashville on his phone Right. And uh, and he's totally making this up. That didn't no, happen. No, no, that didn't happen. Right. No. We know we know that didn't happen. No. She tells him that she never made any calls on his phone, but he doesn't believe her. And he just starts beating her right there in front of Charlie and Amanda. Oh, my God. And they just sit there and watch? Well, Amanda is screaming and crying and begging Jimmy to stop, but Charlie's just chilling. He doesn't care. What fucking, what kind of family is this? That's like, literally what I was like, that is literally my next question. Like, what? Where do these, where do they come from? What the, the suburbs of Illinois. <laughs> Choppers, where everybody knows your name. Oh I my God. Know. Yeah, it's fucked up. So uh, <sighs> eventually Jimmy just drags uh, Katie out of the house and goes to the car and they leave and they go back to Jimmy's house. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Also, okay, again, back to like weird. I mean, I don't know. They didn't touch on this, but like the phone call to her mom, and now it's Christmas. Like, even if you met someone and fell in love and moved in with them, like, like you your... wouldn't wonder where she was at, on Christmas, yeah. and like be trying to track her down. Although he did bash her phone, right? Yeah. Like, right early on, it's possible her mom was trying to get a hold of her that whole time. It's possible, yeah. I'm sure she was. I shouldn't say that she wasn't, but it's just, I don't know. The whole thing is just fucked up. Or like, up. call anyone else. Or like, and where ask? are the where are the people at choppers like she's not reporting to work were right. they like hey she's cleaning this weird guy's house like and nobody right nobody said maybe we should go check on her and find out where she is and what's going yeah. on i guess not no okay so um oh man friend is bringing more wine hi Thank man you. friend oh he can't she hear says, me she no he can't but oh he brought me exactly the same kind thank well, you, you honey tolerate that I'm going to tolerate some more colossal. Coloscopy. You know. colo my my colonoscopy, colonoscopy wine. My your... colonoscopy wine is going well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. So that was Christmas Eve. So now it's uh, Katie's birthday is approaching. And um, so he tells her, like, hey, I'm going to take you to Vegas for your birthday. This is February, early February. I'm gonna so it's been like two months. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, man. Still like daily beating. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And the, in the thing that I was watching, which was all from Katie's perspective, um, she, I got the impression that she didn't want to take a dive into what else was happening, but she also alluded to the fact that there was sexual abuse happening too. I mean, of course there was, mm -hmm. of yeah. course there was. So, um, so it's her birthday. He's like, we're going to take you to Vegas. And Katie is like, sweet. Like, um, no amount of makeup at this point is even going to come close to covering up what's going on with her. And she's like, well, we're going to be in a busy airport. So someone is going to see her condition and say something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this is just repeated yep. failures from humans. So yep. on February 11th, 2011, they arrive at O'Hare international airport they go through the crowded airport, through multiple security checks, board their plane, and nobody says anything. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't. Not one single, hey, sis, are you okay? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, nobody says anything. And she's like, I can't even fucking believe it. Yeah. <sighs> They're also in Vegas for a couple of days, walking through crowded casinos, gambling, going to restaurants, and still nobody says anything. I know. I mean, in Vegas, I can believe it. I, well, yeah. It's like rough night, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm So the day before they are scheduled to fly home, they're in their hotel room at Circus Circus, which I stayed there once, never again. I wasn't surprised to hear that that's where they're at. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't get any bleaker than that. No shit. And I've never <laughs> been, but I've heard stories. Oh, it's interesting. The circus circus has also been there for like a really long time. So it's mm -hmm. not like nice anymore. It's no. long past its like peak of niceness uh -huh. and newness. And it's just yeah. like run down and sad and creepy and weird. And well, and anything with a clown face on it. Yes. It's like, what are we doing? 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Honey pee. Who is your target demographic here? Right? Jamie McNamara. <laughs> That's who. The mullet crowd. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the day before they're scheduled to fly home. They're in their hotel room at Circus Circus, Circus and Jimmy tells Katie to rub his feet. Which... Gross. Yeah. Fuck off with your fucking feet. I <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off with your feet. You and your feet can fuck right off. Seriously. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so she starts rubbing his feet and Jimmy falls asleep. Uh-oh. Here we go. And Katie said, here we go. Katie said that Jimmy was an incredibly light sleeper, like before, like any little noise or movement, and he was wide awake. But she also knows that this might be her only chance. Yeah. So he falls asleep and she starts by just like taking her hands off her feet and sitting there. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't wake up. Then she like slowly stands up and stands there and waits. And he still doesn't wake up. <sighs> this is like so. I know. I'm so tense. Uh -huh. I'm so tense right now. So then she fucking makes a run for it. <gasps> and it's got that little latch thing on the hotel door plus the oh, regular lock. Yeah. She, she does both of those. And she is booking it, which isn't really booking it because her shins are split open. Yeah. Uh, down the hall to the elevator she gets in she's frantically pushing like every button the doors close and she makes it down to the lobby down to hotel security okay <sighs> yeah um it takes a while for hotel security to actually reassure her that it's okay for her to say what it is that she needs because she's just down there and frantic and clearly beaten right yes and she eventually gives them uh jimmy's name and room number and he is arrested in his hotel room. Oh, I'm so glad because I Ooh. I was worried this was like this other story I heard about. And I was conflating the two where the hotel staff did not help her. And she ended up getting stuck back in the room with the her abuser. No. Seriously? Yes. That's another one. Uh, I don't remember where I heard this one, but it was not that long ago. So th th I was really waiting for the twist at the end where you were going to tell me that it didn't fucking work. And I was going to be so upset. Oh, my God. Was it also in Vegas? I think so. Because that's what kept coming up. Because when I was trying to find this story, all I could remember was she was abducted and taken to Vegas and that she waited until he fell asleep and ran. And this other story kept coming up. And that's nothing the about one. Okay. I think that's the one. 
because that ended up not being the point at which she got away because they did oh, not help her. No. Yes. Fuck right off. Yes. Okay, well then, uh, aside from the fact that Circus Circus is gross, I will give them kudos for their security team. Excellent. Yep. Yes. Golf so, lap for Circus yeah. Circus. And okay. She she was saying that the whole time she was running, he thought he was right behind her, but it sounds like he probably stayed asleep the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Because he would have been out of that room looking for her, and he totally. was arrested in the room. In the room. Yep. So she's taken by ambulance to the local hospital with life-threatening injuries. I mean, I'm surprised she's still alive at this point. I was going to – I mean, how long can you be treated like that before you just – your oh. body just gives out? And with, like, the aluminum bat, like, her shins were split open, and she had just been, like, putting, like, paper towels or something on right, them. Right, so she's got it. infections. Uh-huh. I'm surprised she didn't have internal bleeding. Like, hmm mm-hmm. So they get to the hospital, and – all of her ribs are fractured. Her lower back is fractured. Mm. She has a staph infection in her legs. And mm-hmm. doctors tell her that they will likely have to amputate both of her legs to oh save my God. her life. Oh, my God. She has legs that need to be amputated and she fucking ran. I can't. I mean. <sighs> badass. Total fucking, fucking rock badass. star. Yeah. Yes. So they get in contact with her mom. And when her mom gets to the hospital in Vegas, she initially, like, doesn't she goes right past her and doesn't recognize her well yeah yeah oh my god it's so sad when jimmy mcnamara's name comes across the illinois detective desk they recognize the name because three years prior he had a victim just like katie but she was so afraid of him that she refused to testify so they were unable to prosecute him what Uh uh-huh yeah yeah i which is like uh, don't get me started on the criminal justice system. And um, well, I mean, no one has time for that. No, we, no, that's a whole other spinoff podcast. That, that's a, right. That is literally, yes, that is hours and hours of conversation. We, mm-hmm. which, you know, put a pin in that. We'll come back to it. Yeah. We'll do that. You we'll can't do that get one. justice unless we re-traumatize you. Okay. <clears throat> right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, on October 23rd, 2013, Jimmy McNamara was convicted of first degree kidnapping and bodily harm. He was sentenced to life in prison. Oh, good. Yes. And doctors were able to save Katie without amputating her legs. And she has <gasps> since made a full recovery. Oh, did she move to Nashville? She didn't say. Oh, she didn't say. Oh, I, I know. I That was my thing, too. I'm I was like, like, did you live the dream? It didn't say. <laughs> we never found out. No. Oh, no. But she, what a badass. I can't. Oh, my God. It's just chilling to think like a person is asleep and you need to run. And I can't that that whole thing. That is like that sleeping with the enemy thing. That remember that yes. movie? Yes. yes. That, yes. Somebody moved the towels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, what a badass! Unbelievable. I am Un- so happy that actually sort of had a happy ending. Mm-hmm. Oh my what god! What a piece of shit! He's so fucking. Gr- he's so fucking gross. He's so Ugh. gross. Oh my god! I mean, she's forever changed. I know. I know. I really hope she went to Nashville. I do too. I hope she. I do too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know why one wants to go to Nashville. I mean, we want to go to Tennessee as well. We will. Someday. We will. We want to go to Dollywood. We really, really, really. Dollywood is the dream that will not die for me. But same. Uh, yeah, but just to visit. We're not moving to Pigeon Forge. No, oh, no, we're not going to no. live there. No, 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 no. Just a quick walk through. <laughs> yeah. Saw it. I yep. saw it. I can check that off. Now I'm going back. Some to snappy snap of some pics. Some get yeah. some selfies by the yeah. by the like the the Blue Mountains, sure. or whatever they're called. The the Smokies? Smoky Mountains, mm-hmm. the Smoky Mountains, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Sorry, the Blue Mountains are in Oregon. Sure. Uh, wow. So, yeah, that's Katie Sharp. She's a badass. Um, oh, wow. You had me on the edge of my seat there. That one Ooh. was that one was tense. That I'm one was sorry. tense. Like, I felt it in my gut, you know? Like, I really, especially at the end, I was like, oh, my God, like, nail biter. Nail biter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my. Um, Where I found that finally was on a show called Surviving Evil. Episode eight, season two. Have you watched that show? I don't think so. It's a good one. Is that on the ID channel? It is. Okay. It's a good one. Okay. Okay. Um, And then uh, uh, LasVegasSun.com, ReviewJournal.com. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Wow. Good job, sister. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. Fucking Katie Sharp. I'm so glad. I'm so, I am like really 
Like, I feel really honored to have uh, joined the the podcast today as a guest on the day that you got to tell the story oh you've been God. searching for. Finally. That is amazing. Yes. That Thank makes me really happy. You. Me too. It makes me happy. <laughs> I'm happy I finally found it. Oh yes. That's good. It's good. Okay. I am ready for some oh, chaos. Oh, <laughs> you ready for this? Oh yes. my god! I hope this is gonna be. I hope this. I hope you enjoy this story as one as much as I do, and two as much as I enjoyed uh, putting it together for you. So, oh god, um, are you ready? Should we just jump yeah. into it? Oh, okay. Fuck, so yeah. here's uh-huh. here's here's my chaos today. Uh, bear with me because I I am on a little. I told you earlier, I'm on a little laptop, doing all the things, and I want to be able to see your face so that I can get some of your reactions while we go, but I also need to be able to see my, my document here. So, sure. okay. Okay. Oh, I just got a little nervous. Oh my gosh. I have a little, I have a little butterfly a little nervous, action. Purpose? A little nervous. Hold on. Ooh. Give me, give me like one second to drink your water and. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, should I tell, I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about something called the Freetown Project. Okay. Okay. I've never heard of that. Okay. Oh, great. Um, oh. So we'll start with this. Amber, uh-huh. what do you know about New Hampshire? Um, Absolutely. I know that it's the the place where Maura Murray went mis- missing. That's true. That's a good... I didn't even think about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's about it. And I think <laughs> it's a ski town. Maybe. Mostly. Well, it's, I mean, there, I think they're skiing in New Hampshire for is sure. Is it part sure. of the New England hub? Yes, it is. Okay. It's definitely part of New England. It's next door neighbor is Vermont. They're okay. like right there next to each other. That's all I know. Okay. Well, okay. <sighs> New Hampshire's state motto is live free or die. Just die. Yep. Live free <laughs> or die. <laughs> Those are your only two choices. Those are your choices. I'm sure. Catchy, okay. right? Are you into it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So New Hampshire was settled by revolutionaries. Okay. And they loathed taxes by the crown. And they were pissed when the newly formed United States government planned to tax them as well. Okay. So began a deep rooted tradition in that state of avoiding federal taxes. <laughs> they also have no state income or sales tax. New Hampshire, okay. mm-hmm. New Hampshire also has some of the laxest gun laws in the whole country, and they boast the highest rate per capita of machine gun ownership. Oh, what are we? What? Yep. What are we using those for? I don't know, but they've got more per person in New Hampshire than any other state in the union. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. It isn't surprising that New Hampshire would be a bastion for political views outside the mainstream. Yeah? Yeah. And in fact, in the past 20 years, it has become the de facto center of libertarianism. Oh, Mm -hmm. interesting. What is libertarianism exactly? (laughs) Well, as an official political party, libertarianism was founded in 1971, and it's been a fringe movement most of its existence. Libertarians believe, first and foremost, that taxation is theft, that government's role is to protect individual property rights, and that personal freedoms reign above all else. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. They also believe in a free marketplace that when left alone, will sort out societal issues all on its own. Oh. Uh, Yep. Okay. Uh huh. A very common libertarian sentiment is government is not the solution; it's the problem. It almost sounds like constitutionalists. Sort of, yeah. I mean, there are definitely some of those in the camp. Okay. Libertarianism is a big tent. There's a lot of, a lot of views can get captured in that libertarian. A lot of offshoots. Mm Hmm. Okay. Um, So, according to an extensive psychological study into the minds of various political belief systems, libertarians are a very logic-driven group, more so the Democrats and Republicans, but they are less socially connected and loving. It's are they like an every man for himself kind of kind of like that? Yes, personal freedom and personal liberty is king. Okay. Got it. So enter John Babiars. I think that's how you say his name. It's B-A-B-I-A-R-Z. So I'm going to call him Babiars. 
Sure. Moving forward. Okay. So in the early 90s, he and his wife, both libertarians, looking to live a more self-sufficient country life, unmolested by agents of the government, decide to move to the small town of Grafton, New Hampshire. <clears throat> and we're talking... Grafton. We're Grafton small. It had barely more than a thousand residents, maybe twelve hundred, less than eight hundred registered voters, many of which never even really voted. Um, yeah, covering a total of forty six square miles, it contains one paved road that runs through town, Route Four, one tired general store with a single gas pump and a sign reading "Regular Gas." Stop it! R U G U L A R. Oh, wow. That gives me the uncomfortable uh-huh. tingles. Okay. I know. One church building, mm-hmm. one abandoned mica mine that's a tourist attraction now, quote unquote, oh. a small public library that is open for three hours on Wednesday mornings. And- <laughs> that's oddly specific. <laughs> yeah. That's when the librarian's available. Yep. That's when the library's open. <laughs> and a fire station that pulls double duty as a town meeting hall. Okay. Okay. One elected sheriff covers the whole town. Mm. Bobby Ars describes the citizens of Grafton as, quote, unsupportive of bureaucracy and, quote, hostile towards zoning. Oh. Yeah. Libertarians do not like laws and regulations. Okay. uh, At all. As a, as a principle. They're like, I just put my flag here. This is where I'm building my house. That's right. (laughs) Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. You perfect. got it, sister. All right. <laughs> Bobby Ars and his wife built a modest life for themselves on their new property with chickens and pigs and a vegetable garden and beehives. You get it. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He became a volunteer fireman. He's very important to him. But of course, Grafton doesn't actually pay for a fire department of any kind because that would be ridiculous. No, that no. is not a government agency. No. no. And neighbors helping neighbors. That's right. That's right. And set mm-hmm. his sights on ambitions of political office. He ran for governor of New Hampshire three times as a libertarian. And he did OK as far as third parties go. I think the third time he ran, he got almost three percent of the vote. Well, I mean, so did the Tiger King. So what? Are we right. Doing? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Right. Did the Tiger King run as a libertarian or an independent? I can't remember. Independent. And he got independent. About 3%. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. He crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not a bad showing for a third party. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, in the early 2000s, libertarian online forums were awash with like minded individuals across the U.S. who were desperate to connect with other libertarians with the dream of growing their political movement in a meaningful way. Enter the Freetown Project. Oh, God. The goal was simple. Hordes of libertarians would move to a small town, take over the local government, and turn that town into a libertarian utopia. Oh, my God. This would show the nation and the world what successful libertarianism looks like. This sounds like wild, wild country. (laughs) Kind of. With the, what's that, cult? The Rajajnish news or whatever. Yeah, 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 Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one website dedicated to this vision run by a man of questionable morals named Larry Pendarvis describes the goals thus. To remove burdensome regulations in order to obtain an anything goes frontier that would assert inalienable rights, such as the right to have more than two junk cars on private property. (laughs) Sounds like that's very self-serving. It's really specific, right? (laughs) It's really specific. (laughs) Tell me how many cars I can have on my property. (laughs) Okay. The right to gamble. I mean, okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. You do you. The right to be truant from school. Hmm. I mean, I'm like, I... uh, uh, how about, I mean, I could see an argument for that. All right. Sure. Mm-hmm. The right to traffic and drugs. Okay. Libertarians are very like free market. Everything should be legal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the right to incest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then there is, of course, the right to traffic organs. To hold duels. Uh, yep. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> And to organize bum fights. What the fuck is that? <laughs> a bum fight? 
Like a booty pop fight? No, you know, we should, we should be able to pay homeless or otherwise indigent people small amounts of money to fist fight. Like a dog fighting ring or ba- with yep. people? Yep. Oh my God. With, with bums, Amber, with bums. They're just bums. First off, that's a problematic <laughs> word, Mr. Larry. And also, oh my. So we have a right to exploit people in the time, their time of desperation. If they want to be exploited, why would we not exploit them? Okay. But this has nothing to do with anything, but I have a controversial question for you because <laughs> real quick. Okay. Like, I don't know. 10 episodes ago, I did a chaos story where a biological mother and son were in love. Yep. Okay. And uh, Manfred and I took this whole deep dive into that because you had said the right to incest. And I know that a lot of people are going to be like screaming into their iPhones right now. That's right. Scream, you guys. Scream. But if both people are Are consenting, what's really the problem? Yep. Yep. It's fucking gross. I wouldn't no, it's do it absolutely myself. Abhorrent. No, it's horrible. But why is it illegal? Right. And so that's why he also wants us to be able to have the right to cannibalism. Okay. Well, now that's gone too far. So well, it's might. mutually <laughs> consensual cannibalism. Someone is saying, yes, eat me. Yes, that happens, you know. That's a king. After- after you're dead or oh I know there was a whole case about <laughs> yes, that. Yes, anyway, yes, yes, yeah, you and, know, yes. Yes, yes. I was just wondering what your thoughts were on the incest. Take government thing. off of my my cannibalism and my incest. That's what I think. I always get a little bit scared for myself when I hear this stuff and I actually am on board with most of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Because when you, because this is a thing, right? This is libertarians. It's about logic. They're very logical, and you just uh-huh. logic your way into agreeing. Is what happened. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's what, what happened. happened. Shit. Okay. Uh-huh. Go okay. on. <laughs> so, Pendarvis was amongst a small group of men founding this free town project with the help and blessing of Bobby Bobby Ars and his wife in their new hometown of Grafton. Okay. In the minds of all these people, Grafton was perfect and ripe for the picking. In fact, they were convinced that it would be really easy because the folks of Grafton sounded like they were already on board with this way of thinking. In the free towners' minds, they would be welcome with open arms. Oh, yeah. So they and others started showing up, buying large pieces of property to make a place for even more people to move to town. Bobby Ars and his wife helped kind of, you know, get people in um there was kind of two groups that came you had your like don't have any money types and then you had people with like lots of disposable income so like sure. the people with disposable income went, came in and bought houses and properties and the people without income would then show up and they would be given you know like yeah you can stay here kind of shit right so Many of these properties would end up with like trailers and RVs and tents and yurts and shipping containers and crudely constructed cabins that were more like shacks. Even a few true tent cities formed yeah. on some of these properties, right? It was all very hodgepodge. Okay. And s- since there was no zoning, there was nothing they couldn't do, really. So all these ad hoc camps in the woods <clears throat> often had seeping sewage and unattended oh, garbage God. heaps and other unsanitary living conditions. Uh-huh. All told, between 2004 and 2009, an estimated, because they don't know for sure, 200 people, maybe more, moved into Grafton in the name of individual freedom. Okay. Most of them single men uh-huh. who loved their guns about as much as they hated taxes. These are the men that, like, make bunkers oh well then you just you just took my next line because some of these (laughs) some of these were also not libertarians at all but they were drawn to the town in the hopes of finding a place they could start their survivalist lifestyles in peace sure for end of days Mm -hmm. got it and Uh anarchists anarchists the Uh self-described extreme left right right Uh right yeah right 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 so it was kind of a haven for all of them oh great (laughs) many of these men went by Colorful nicknames like Redman, Chan, the Mad Russian. <laughs> Sorry. No, it gets better. Rich Angel for a while went by Dick Angel. Oh. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure, as you do. As you do. So <laughs> these mostly men set about trying to make changes to the local laws and budgets. 
Oh. Yeah. And the locals weren't exactly stoked by any of this, and they would show up at town meetings angry and resistant to these saviors showing up to tell them how to run their town. Uh-huh. But the Freetowners had just enough support, and there were just enough people in town who didn't give a shit and didn't show up, that they were able to force some changes. Not all the changes they wanted, but some. So they were unsuccessful in getting them to withdraw from the regional school district. Okay. And explicitly condemning the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> I love a good manifesto. <laughs> and eliminating funding of the public library. The library the library held on. For that three hours on Wednesday. <laughs> That's right. They're holding on by a thread right. in the first place. That's what right. are we doing? <laughs> That's right. They were successful in some areas. They were able to cut the $1 million town budget by 30%. Oh. They were able to deny funding to the county senior citizen council. <laughs> and while they didn't abolish the town planning board, they did fill it with a whole bunch of free towners who cut its budgets to $50 and effectively shut it down. Cut the budget to $50? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Everyone in the planning department gets a Starbucks today. And, <laughs> and that's our meeting Jesus. for this quarter. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh huh. All told, over the course of seven years of stripping municipal budgets, beyond the defunding of the planning board, they also succeeded in turning off most streetlights in town, which oh. saved money on electricity. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. They discontinued maintaining huge sections of the dirt roads because there's only one paved road, Route 4, through town. But they <laughs> had all these dirt roads and they were like, we're not taking care of that shit. So wow. they saved money on highway materials and equipment. And they got rid of Christmas lights in winter and the fireworks on the 4th. Fun suckers, man. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But those savings were offset. Uh, by a huge increase in legal fees, the town was forced to pay when these free towners kept showing up with lawsuits aimed at laws and regulations and wage increases for public servants that the free towners opposed. What the fuck? Yeah. But they didn't actually win any of the lawsuits that they filed against the town. Right. But oh. the town's legal fees went through the roof, which they'd never had to do before because all of a sudden they're constantly fighting these these lawsuits. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Libertarians believe that if government gets the fuck out of way, right, private citizens mm -hmm. and businesses will fill the void. That's that's how that works, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in Grafton, after all these budgets were cut, private replacements never materialized. Oh, there so was a just... there was a private fire department, but they never actually put out a fire. Uh, okay. The freedom themed farmers market. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It barely got going and then it petered out and died. Sure. And the public service militia never even got off the ground. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wow. In the meantime, the roads fell apart as repair costs continued to get voted down. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The state, the state put the town on notice about two bridges in their jurisdiction that were in peril of collapse due to neglect, but nothing was done. Oh right? God. Right? The town municipal office fell into disrepair and bug infestation. Ew. Yeah. The, the admin finally quit because she just wouldn't work in that building anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Poor admin. Yeah. Yeah. She really held on for a long time, didn't mm -hmm. she? Mm -hmm. Poor thing. She tried. Mm -hmm. Crime went up exponentially. Grafton had its first murder in living memory. Oh, my God. A double homicide, no less. Fuck. And they don't have a police department. No, no. They have a sheriff. Oh, okay. A, it was a roommate dispute. I think it was actually a tent mate dispute. <laughs> or, like, or like a... Like a yurt, yurt mate dispute? Sure, sure. <laughs> a yurt mate dispute. That's my side of the yurt. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Meth labs popped up on a lot of these community living properties. <clears throat> Sexual assaults increased significantly. And the police chief, as we talked about, he was voted down on his request for a salary in increase. And he had lots of downtime because they only had one cruiser for the for the sheriff and it was like but, always in the shop trying to get repairs because it was oh always breaking God. down <laughs> yeah 
Uh-huh. So it was a goddamn mess. Okay. It was a it goddamn like mess. A shit hot mess. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. All right. So little pivot here. Uh-huh. Let's talk about bears. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. Humans in North America going back literally ages, like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, have hunted most bear species and pretty much all other large animal species to near or total extinction. Right. Mm. What's left in abundance are the smart crafty and social black bear uh-huh. learning learning how to survive alongside humans Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. black bears can smell food seven times further away than a bloodhound they can flip 300 pounds easily and run yeah and run as fast as a deer when they want to they're fast yeah and they're problem solvers Uh-oh. and new hampshire the state that doesn't want to tax its citizens has gutted their fish and game department over the decades. And so, before the Freetowners even arrived, the black bear population, especially around Grafton, because it's a pretty remote spot where Grafton is, right? that bear population was growing ever larger, mostly unchecked, and they were getting bold. Uh Uh-oh. So, in June of 1999, New England was experiencing a drought and a very, very hot summer. <clears throat> Crops and wild vegetation alike were not faring well, and that was when one Grafton resident witnessed a black bear come barreling out of the wood line right past the picnic table she was sitting at in her backyard and snag two of her three kittens. Oh, no. She watched as that bear made a feast of them. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, and so began a growing problem of cats in the area disappearing in mass. Oh, that's so sad. Some people brushed it off or like chalked it up to coyotes or bobcats, but Jessica Sule, who's now down to one kitten and a few other residents, they had other ideas about what was happening to the cats. Uh huh. So over the next few years, the cat population continued to dwindle. People in the town of Grafton talked about an abandoned barn full of feral cats that was now completely empty. Fuck. Dogs went missing. (gasps) One resident relayed a story of witnessing a bear walking onto his property in the middle of winter. When they're supposed to be hibernating. To go to town on a bird feeder. When car headlights came into view and the bear laid down in the ditch by the side of the road until the headlights passed. Holy shit. Yeah. So like, first of all, what the hell is this bear doing out and about in the middle of winter, right? They're Uh supposed to be hibernating, right? And also, how the hell is this bear that smart that it knows to hide from headlights? Well, it turns out bears are really, really smart. And also... That's spooky. And also... (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meet Donut Lady. Oh, okay. We don't know her real name. Uh-huh. She asked to remain anonymous for reasons that will become clear. Oh, okay, great. Mm-hmm. She started seeing bears on her property at some point in this timeline. I'm not really sure where, right? And to okay. her, they looked thin and hungry. They uh-huh. raided they raided her bird feeders. They they have a thing for the bird seed. The bird feeders are always a thing. Jake's mom, right? She's got bird feeders and they've got like a bear that comes down and eats their compost pile over there uh-huh. in Preston. And like, and like, there's this period of time when he's like gathering fat for the winter and she knows he's going to come pretty much every night and go through the compost bin. And like her bird feeders, her bird seed feeders are always like in the house after, like before she goes to bed at night. Because he'll eat that Because he will destroy them to eat oh the bird God. seed. Yeah. 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 Oh it's a God. thing. So they raided her bird feeders, as, as bears are wont to do, and she decided the right thing to do was to feed these bears. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. So every day on her feeding rounds for her own animals, because, you know, she's got this property, she's got whatever, chickens, goats, whatever she's got, right? Her dogs, her whatever. So uh-huh. she goes and does her rounds every morning to feed her animals, and she adds the bears to her list. Oh, uh-oh. And she would dump a pile of bird seed, like a bucket of bird seed, near or a pile or a bag or whatever near one of the trees on her property for the bears. And then she would sit there and watch because, oh, aren't they cute? She'd watch these bears like eat the bird seed. And it was lovely. Uh-oh. And her husband was taking all these pictures all the time with the bears on their property. They were like beloved, right? Okay. 
shit. But word spread through the bear grapevine about this daily buffet. <laughs> the bear grapevine. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And before long, more and more bears were showing up every morning to get some of that free seed action. Yeah, because they're telling their bear friends, yes. like, hey, there's a seed pile here. That's Come right. With me. That's right. Yeah. That's uh-huh. exactly right. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and bird seed is actually pretty expensive. So uh-huh. she started buying feed grain instead and she started feeding them twice a day. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. It got to be so much grain that she would literally buy it by the truckload to keep up with their appetite. Oh, my God. She was spending more money than she cares to admit. So kind of we have to just guess exactly how much this was costing her. And she did this for a long time. And she would top each pile of grain with a dozen donuts. Are you? She would order fucking donuts. Just the, the cheap ones. Day. Just the cheap oh, ones, Amber, from the like market. Like a basic glaze. Like a, a basic, basic glaze. glaze from like QFC. Right. Like Which the also cheapy. is my favorite. Basic glaze. Just <laughs> I mean, the you best, can't go but... wrong with a basic glaze. No. But, yeah. A dozen donuts? On top of the pile of feed. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh-huh. All and right. over, over time, these bears would get closer and closer to her while they waited for her to dump her buckets. Right? Mm-hmm. And so like they would, they would, they knew, they would know. And so they, and they, this, this, this like grip of bears is like hanging out like clamoring and jockeying for front position and she's like doing the like get away shoo shoo and they were basically like unshoeable at this point yeah of course and they're bears Uh uh-huh and how many are there i mean i didn't get a number on it i just know that it was a growing group of bears Sure. I think it started out as like a mama and a couple of cubs, but like it got m- to be much more than that. Fuck. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby <sighs> Ars was dealing with bears over on his property, too. They were relentlessly raiding his chicken coop, which was in a constant state of upgrade and fortification, like always finding either feathers that showed that the chickens were gone. One a couple time, One time he actually found a bear just sitting there like ripping chickens apart and eating them (laughs) he's not even trying to hide it no what no here i am yeah and and of course they destroyed his beehives going for that sweet sweet nectar of the gods that the bears cannot resist yeah Uh yeah like winnie the pooh yeah 100 percent. even his ram wasn't safe he watched an he watched a bear eviscerate his ram oh my god Mm mm-hmm okay he put up heavy duty electrical fence and that didn't keep them out you know like he just so anyway, Bobby Ars obviously wanted to hunt the bears down. Mm-hmm. Like a, you know, yeah. that's what you do. Get with his machine gun. Yeah. With sure. his machine gun. Sure, sure, uh-huh. sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but state laws don't allow for that kind of thing. You need a hunting license and it has to be a certain time of the year and you can only hunt a certain amount with that license in a certain way. Right. And here's the thing. Libertarians would say that as soon as an animal steps foot on your property, you can do whatever you want to it. So on the one hand, Bobby R should be able to shoot those bears on sight, according to him. Right. And on the other hand, Donut Lady is absolutely within her right to feed them all she wants. <laughs> Donut Lady. Uh-huh. In, in right. fact, another four to five families in Grafton were also feeding the bears. Oh. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, when bears are being fed generously year round they tend to no longer go into hibernation. Uh-oh. Hence the reason. Also, resi- like you're fucking with like a nature's natural life cycle. Bears aren't supposed to eat donuts and not go into hibernation. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, okay. Great. So that, that cool explains. Donut. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks, donut lady. So that explains, right, why that one guy saw a big old black bear wandering through the snow in his yard that one night, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Some, some bears were reportedly like pulling down game cameras set up in the woods repeatedly. They were constantly like yanking them down. Like they're not oh my dumb. God. And they often, and then they started showing up during the middle of the day. They weren't just sneaking around Holy at night anymore. Shit. Yeah. And tons of bear, tons of residents witnessed bears just chilling. They're like just super like, brazen. Now. Yeah, like right by houses, right by people, completely unafraid and undeterred and completely unshoeable. Wow. So now we have this perfect storm, right? A state bear population that is not being managed enough. An influx of new residents who don't give a shit about waste <laughs> management or sewage <laughs> management or recycling or basic hygiene, I'm guessing. Um, oh, God. Right? Uh huh. You can see these guys, right? You can see these men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of facial hair and not a lot of soap, oh. right? 
Ew. A group of people feeding the bears. Another group of people shooting them or lighting off firecrackers at them to scare them away, pouring cayenne pepper over their garbage to deter them, setting up electric fences. And right. everywhere and everywhere the bears go looking for food, because they know that there's food in all of those places, right? Uh-huh. They have no idea if they're going to be fed or shot at. Oh, my God. So that's it. I'm calling it. This This is chaos. <laughs> this is this it. This is fucking chaos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. Oh, sister. <laughs> That was a good one. I'm not done. Oh, my God. <laughs> so in the spring and summer of 2012, New Hampshire experiences another major drought, worse than 1999. And at this point, it's been over a decade of bold behavior by bears and questionable behavior by humans. Uh huh. Tracy Colburn is minding her own business, about to feed her dog when she opens the door to her porch, only to find two cubs and a mama bear right fucking there. Oh, my God. No. On her porch. Mm-mm. So the, the cubs scatter, right? Climb over the railing and run away. And her dog gets into it with Mama. So Uh-oh. Tracy goes after them because they're, like, in the yard now. And she screams at the bear like you do to scare it off. And instead, mm-hmm. Mama turns around and starts coming for Tracy. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. She was really badly been injured. She like put her arms up to defend herself and she got like clawed like across both oh her arms God. and like across her chest. And she was only spared because her dog came back and started like biting at the bear from behind. And so the bear oh. like abandoned her to go back at- to attacking the dog. So she was able to like run back into the house and shut the door. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. This was the first bear attack on a human in a hundred years in New Hampshire. Because bear attacks are actually exceedingly rare. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that winter into 2013, a group of local men quietly and covertly went out one day and tracked down five or six bear dens and slaughtered a total of 13 bears in one day while they slept. Oh. This is highly illegal. Yeah. And morally repugnant on multiple levels. But they did what they had to do, right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. To solve the problem that they've created. Sure. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Hmm. The following, yeah. uh, but you know, the following year, there weren't really any bear complaints in the Grafton area, not officially at least, but this doesn't mean that the winter massacre actually fixed anything because it was business as usual the year after that. Right. Okay. And not only that, but like, you can't really go off of reports anyway, because this is a, a, an, a state and a town of people who are like really averse to the government and very unlikely to call them to report things anyway. Yeah. They're not going to call like wildlife, you know, officials to come help. No, no. Yeah. And when they have, when they have, especially where the attacks, the wildlife, the fish and game, like they don't really do anything. And they basically just tell them, stop leaving your barbecue out at night. Don't feed the bears. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was around this time that the Free State Project started to really gain some steam Mm -hmm. and would eventually eclipse and kill the Free Town Project. The Free State Project started out around 2003 with the aim of taking over a whole state, Okay. specifically New Hampshire. This is Uh the libertarians again and their vision of (laughs) utopia. Because it's going so well. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Well, these are kind of like parallel efforts. Mm -hmm. The Free State Project took a little longer because they were slicker and they were better funded than Freetowners. And they also worked to distance themselves from the less palatable types in their midst, right? Like our good friend Pendarvis, who Mm -hmm. was actually elbowed out of the Freetown Project in the early years of the experiment due to his inflammatory opinions and his Filipino mail order bride business. Oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What? Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. That'll do it. Yep. I guess. And there was a couple others that they really tried to, you know, say, like, not claim as theirs, right? This guy, Ian Freeman, he's a very popular podcast host with a large global audience, but he also espouses his opinion that minors can consent to sexual relationships with adults. What the fuck? 
He's a podcaster. Mm-hmm. He's a libertarian oh. podcaster. Oh, and then there's and then when there was Chris Cantwell who wanted to be a part of their whole thing, and they were like, nope, because he famously participated in the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. Uh huh. Which tragically wow. resulted in murder when one white sure. nationalist drove a car into a group of counter protesters. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. <sighs> So the Free State Project set out from the start to get 20,000 people to sign a pledge to move to New Hampshire, much in the way the smaller group moved to Grafton, with the explicit goal of turning New Hampshire into a libertarian state. Okay. And and the trigger, as they call it, for the move would be when they reached that 20,000 number, right? Mm -hmm. So they reached their goal in 2016. They had 20,000 pledges and they jumped into action and the phone bank lit up and they started calling all their pledges and saying, now is the time, get your shit, move to New Hampshire. Okay. So they were getting some success, which means they had some new allies like Vermin Supreme. Vermin Uh Supreme. What's Vermin Supreme? He is a would-be presidential candidate who has run for president repeatedly as an independent since the 90s. Oh. And he declared himself a libertarian. Mm. He's most... Rec- <laughs> he's he's mm-hmm. most recognizable <laughs> for his very long gray beard and the boot he wears on his head. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry, I have pictures for you. <laughs> he has a a boot on his head? He wears a boot on his head. Why? Mm, no. I don't know. He is, his major policy platforms of his presidential candidacies include a mandatory toothbrushing law. Yep. Free. What? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Free. Okay. Po- <laughs> 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 Tell me what that is. I have to. Know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Woo. There, there's more. Oh good. There's more. He has other platforms. Mm, mm. Good. Free ponies for every American. Time travel research. Of obviously. And zombie apocalypse preparedness. <laughs> Vermin I mean, Supreme in, for president. In that order? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I didn't do a deep dive on Vermin. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I can't wait to see this picture. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, I got my I got my email all teed up for you. Oh, I just didn't want to God. send it before we recorded because I didn't want to give anything away. Sure. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> wow. Uh, so even with vermin on their side, libertarians did Ugh. gain ground in New Hampshire after the trigger. Okay. Some gained state elected positions. They would like run as Democrats and Republicans to get in the office and then Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then three young state legislatures slitch, switched to libertarian. So they formed a caucus. And in 2019, they had 20 state reps and scores of local positions on school boards and municipal committees and stuff. They were all held by libertarians. Wow. And then wow. they got shit done. Really? Mm hmm. Holy shit. They got rid of licensing requirements for loaded concealed firearms, as well as criminal penalties for small amounts of pot and hash. They deregulated cryptocurrencies, legalized home poker games and fireworks, instituted wow. a, a requirement for a warrant for cell phone tracking, allowed brew pubs to brew cider, cut business taxes, and all told they eliminated like 1,600 state regulations, most of which everyone considered obsolete anyway. Wow. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love all that. Uh-huh. Except that after the trigger... The bear problem was no longer just in and around Grafton. <laughs> Back to the bear problem. <laughs> okay. Did I mention we're talking about bears today? <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That bear shit went statewide. Uh, no. Bear attacks on humans continued to happen. 
and more and more bears were being killed by local residents and officials for lack of any other choice. Right. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. Likely the libertarian influence on an already tax averse state led to even more cuts and less resources at Fish and Game, leaving them without the tools they needed to properly address the issue. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and this is decidedly a New Hampshire problem because New Hampshire's next door neighbor, Vermont, has practically identical geography and bear population, but they don't even have half the problems in their bear human interactions that New Hampshire has. Yeah, because Vermont's not over there fucking freestyling everything with donuts. No, Jesus and they're Christ. also probably like picking up their garbage, like proper right. people and like disposing of it in proper places. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Around 2019, April Rogers, 71, a resident of Groton, which is less than 20 miles from Grafton, woke up at 1 a.m. to noises in her kitchen. She wheeled herself in there in her wheelchair, obviously. <laughs> She's an old woman living alone. To find a mess of trash and bear shit and a bear in her house. In the kitchen. A in, bear. The, in the kitchen. Oh, my God. So she sat quietly trying not to startle it or upset it, right? And then it lumbered over and it sat down next to her and it started like wobbling its head back and forth. And she just <laughs> quietly sat there like, don't oh make any sudden movements, right? And then it just grabbed her face and pulled her out of the chair. No. Its claws like gashed her scalp and her cheek and destroyed an eye. And she suffered fractures in her facial bones and a oh few of her vertebrae. God. Like she is lucky to be alive. I can't imagine being defenseless like that in a wheelchair. And there's a fucking bear. A in fucking your house. bear in your kitchen. Oh my God. Okay. The town of Grafton hasn't fared better since many, if not most of the tree towners did move away. Their grand experiment failed to bring about the libertarian utopia they hoped for. Oh, mm -hmm. and they left the town worse than they found it. Assholes. The bear problems in New Hampshire haven't been solved either. Although the Fish and Game Department has plans to reduce the bear population in and around Grafton back to its 2013 levels, that plan will take like 10 years to implement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Bobby Ars and his wife continue to live on the property in Grafton. They bought close to 30 years ago now. Bobby Ars is holding the volunteer fire department together by a string. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Sure. The failure sure. of the Freetown Project hasn't changed his political views. <laughs> of course not. I actually included a picture of him and a link to his website so you can check him out. Oh, good. Yeah. He says the libertarian movement is more cerebral, if you will. Oh, okay, Bobby. They they lack the <laughs> ability to deal with people at the human level. <laughs> and it seems they also lack the ability to deal with bears. Sure. Of course. Oh, my God. I loved everything about that. <laughs> What the fuck? So oh. you're going to be so proud of me. I read a whole book to give you this story. Holy shit, sister. Y yeah, there's a book. It's called, you're going to love this, A Libertarian Walks Into a Bear. <laughs> I love it so much. It's so good. And there's so much more in there. There's so many more characters I could have told you about. Like, it's filled with characters. Oh, my God. And more history. And it's it's actually a really, really good book. It's really Ooh. worth reading. I love it. Wow. God, I did. Thank and you, you are so welcome, Sissy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fucking yeah. New Hampshire. Fucking New Hampshire. I'm telling wow. you, now you know a lot more about New Hampshire than you did before I you do. started. I do. Thank you for that. You're Thank so you welcome. That. You're so welcome. Yeah. I And I have pictures for you that I can send so you can include those in your posts. And uh, I also did a little bit of my like research on um, Vox.com had an article uh, that was kind of a review of the book and, with an interview of the author and the New Republic.com also did an article, which is actually how I had originally heard about the story, right? Like somebody shared this article like a few years ago and I I was like dying when I read this story. And so <laughs> when I decided I was going to do this story, I was like, the only way to really do this justice is to get that book and like read mm -hmm. the whole thing and like read the whole book. Wow. I fucking love everything about that. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I hope I never find a bear in my kitchen. No. That terrifying. Oh <laughs> right? my God. 
I know. Wow. Oh my <sighs> god. Well, this was fucking amazing. I had a good time. I'm so Thank you for co-hosting with me. Thank you for having me. I oh my god, feel I so special it. to be included in your you baby. You are special. You're oh. the first one on the list. Oh, it's the first one on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well fuck oh my god well do you have anything else no i mean i think uh i think we did all right today i think so too yeah We're i think i gave you half That's oh my god good. i'm so sorry i told you my story no, was gonna be I long i love it i fucking love everything about it um i love the donut lady and the bear in the kitchen sort of <laughs> sort of oh my god <laughs> And don't forget well, about vermin. Oh, fucking vermin. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, my God. A boot on the head. You know what that reminded me of when you were describing him? Do you remember one time when you showed up at mom and dad's and you were talking about the guy with the long beard jogging down the street and his beard had parted in the middle yes. from the wind? Yes. <laughs> and it was like flapping, up. like parted and flapping over <laughs> yes. his shoulders. <laughs> Yes. yes. That's what I pictured when you were describing. It. You're not too far off except imagine a big giant like like galoshes type boot sticking <laughs> up the back of his head. <laughs> Why though? I don't know. Why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, as soon as we're done, as soon as we're done, I will send you the email so you oh can get the full, God. the full, sh- the full, sh- the full thing. You can see the picture. Also, I wouldn't hate if he won and I got a pony. <laughs> I, right? No, no, for sure. <laughs> but not in the kitchen. No ponies in the no, kitchen. I don't want a pony in the kitchen. I just want a pony. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, All right. I fucking love you. I love you too. Thanks for having me. This was good time. It was. And it was also motherfucking um Chaotic. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of Crime Wine and Chaos. Artwork by Erica Peterson. Music by Paul Abner. Audio editing by Amber Clifton. We are on Facebook at Crime, Wine, and Chaos and on Instagram at Crime, Wine, and Chaos Pod. If you would like to support the show or submit a listener story, you can visit our website at CrimeWineAndChaos.com for our Patreon link and listener story submission. Cheers! Thanks again for listening to True Crime by Indie Drop-In Network. If you would like to nominate a true crime podcast to be featured, just send me a tweet at Indie Drop-In. I'd also love to hear if one of our featured podcasts is now your favorite show. Indie Drop-In survives off ad revenue and listener donations. If you would like to contribute, please consider buying me a coffee. You can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Indie Drop-In. If you look at the very bottom of the episode description, I put a link in there to make it really easy. Indie Drop-In has many other shows that you also might like. Just go to IndieDropIn.com. All right, see you next week.